Hello Year 9, hope you're all okay. I think by the time you watch this, everything will be looking a little bit more normal. You might be able to go and get your hair cut. You might be able to go and eat in a restaurant. I don't know, whatever you're doing, I hope you're all right. Um, this week, another. this is the last home learning that we're gonna have before the summer holidays. Um, and we wanted to make it all about atomic structure just to make sure that when you start year 10, in September you're really really well prepared um, for GCSE chemistry because this is a really important topic and kind of if you don't understand this uh, it makes it really hard to understand everything else so make sure you've got pen and paper to make any notes um, and remember you can always pause it if you need to the assignment this week isn't on a word document it's on a PowerPoint but you can edit it just the same and still type into it um, and just remember to hand that in to your teacher for some feedback and the date that it's due is the 15th of July. Okay, so this activity, um, you've probably done something really similar like this when we did chemical reactions earlier in the year. I think we did that just after Christmas. So what you need to do um, on this one is you need to decide whether each picture represents an element, compound or mixture and ideally say why you think that. So you need to think back to what the definitions for element, compound and mixtures are, um, have a think, and um, then write down, is it element, compound or mixture, and why? Pause the video now and have a go at that. Okay. Right, so hopefully you've got that. So I'll just go through these really, really quickly with you. We've got A, which is a compound. And the reason that it's a compound is because um, there's two different types of elements that are joined together um, and they're bonded and they could not easily be separated. Here we've got a mixture and it's a mixture of two elements, that one. This one's a mixture. This, one's a, this little one here, that'd be a compound but then it's mixed with an element, so it's still a mixture. This one's a compound, again, they're bonded. Element, only one type of atom. Element, only one type of atom. Element there, that one's a mixture, because you can see different types. And again, this one would be a compound, two different colors, two different size circles, but still bonded together, so it's a compound. Okay, so hopefully you got those right. I think you've definitely seen something like that before. This, Like I said, this whole set of home learning should definitely just be revision for you. Okay, so going back to what is an atom, um, gold and copper are both examples of elements, so they contain only one type of atom. And you can see in this picture, if you zoom in, you'd see only copper atoms and only gold atoms in there. There's nothing else. So they're the smallest particles and the building blocks of things. Uh, there's a little video there you can watch and they're very small and they have a radius of about 10 to the power of minus 10 meters so it's and the, so that's really really small and the radius of the nucleus so the bit in the middle of the atom is one ten thousandth of the radius of the atom so someone once told me that if you could scale up an atom if you could kind of make an atom the size of Wembley Stadium um, and you put a football on the center spot of the pitch that would be like the nucleus and then the electrons would not be even in the stadium they'd be outside the stadium in the car park so that is gives you an idea of how big and how much empty space is inside an atom okay so the structure of an atom you might be able to make notes straight away onto your assignment here or you could do them on paper but just to remind you that in the nucleus we've got protons and neutrons and the electrons are spread around the edge of the atom and they're held in shells okay so there's another labeled diagram just to remind you of that make sure you can match them up make sure you know what we mean by the nucleus the neutrons protons and electrons okay so this one I'll go through with you. So um, this is activity two on your PowerPoint assignment. So pause it now and have a go at it and then come back and I'll go through the answers to this bit with you. OK, all right. So hopefully you've done that and we can go through the answers now. So on this diagram here, um, I can tell that the red ones are going to be protons because protons are positive. OK. This bit here is the nucleus. 
and the electrons are negative and the neutrons are neutral okay right this one here says how many protons and neutrons are in the atom in activity one so if we look at this this is the atom in activity one here so i've got two positive protons two neutral neutrons and two electrons what is the mass of the atom? And it says the mass is protons and neutrons. So there's two protons added to two neutrons. And that means the mass is four. You don't need a unit for that. It's just four. Why is the overall charge on the atom zero? So you should remember that protons are positive. Electrons are negative. So that means that the number of protons equals the number of electrons. So the overall charge is zero. Okay. Right. So looking at this one, this um, I'm going to follow this through as like I do, we do, you do. Um, obviously, we can't go through one together anyway, because you're not really here. I'm just talking to myself. Um, but I'll do I do, we do, you do, and then you can have a go at some of them. So. If you do get stuck when you're doing the assignment, come back and watch this part of the video again, because I'll try and talk you through what I'm doing um, at each stage. OK, so <coughs> the objective of this is to work out what the mass of the, an atom of carbon is. This is carbon. What the atomic um, what the atomic number is, how many protons, how many neutrons and how many electrons. And like I said, this is the foundation for so many things in chemistry um, and if you don't get this, there's so many things that you won't be able to access. So this is so important and it's why we go on about it so much. So a lot of people say to me that when they look at the periodic table and it looks, the periodic table looks a bit like this, doesn't it? And it's got two numbers. They always say, yeah, the mass is the number on the top and the atomic number is the number on the bottom. And that's a really dangerous way of thinking about it because some periodic tables swap them around. So you could get yourself in quite a bit of trouble there. So the way I prefer to think of it is that the mass is the massive number. So when I mean massive number is the biggest number. So 12 is bigger than six. So I know that 12 is the mass number. The atomic number that means is six. Right, so there's a little key here, a little list of rules. So it says that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. Okay, so straight away, I know that there's six protons in an atom of carbon. The mass is the protons add the neutrons, and the neutrons is the mass minus the protons. Okay, so to work out the number of neutrons, I take the mass and I take away the number of protons. 12 minus 6 is 6. And finally, the number of electrons. Well, I know that the proton number also equals the number of electrons. So again, it's going to be six. So that looks really like neat and tidy that all the numbers are the same. They're not always like that. So don't just think you can put the same number down for every single one because that won't work for you every single time. It just does for some of them. Let's have a look at another one. OK, so there's the rules for you again, just in case you need to jog your memory. So um, I've got here, and you might want to pause it now and have a go at it on your own and then check your answer. That's totally up to you, but I'll go through it anyway. So again, the mass, the massive number is 19. And that means the atomic number is nine. Okay, so straight away, I know that half of 19 isn't nine. So I'm going to have a problem here. Well, not going to be a problem, but it's not going to be like the previous one where the numbers are not going to be all the same. So I know that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So I know there's nine protons. Now, mass number, the mass number means that there's 19 in total protons and neutrons in the nucleus. I already know that nine of them are protons. So 19 minus nine means that there are 10 neutrons. And finally, the proton number is equal to the number of electrons. So there's got to be nine electrons. Let's have a look at one more. OK, so this is the last one. And then you guys can have a go um, yourselves. So this one's oxygen. So finally, um, I can see that the massive number is eight. OK, so the massive number, the mass number must be eight. The atomic number is the other one, so that's six. Um, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, so that's six. 
Um, 8 minus 6 is 2. Ooh, is ooh, 2. There you go. And finally, the electrons, there's 6 protons, so there must be 6 electrons. Okay. I'm just going to write down as well that you need to remember that the mass number equals the massive number okay that's really important so always remember that and you won't go wrong so now go through the uh, powerpoint assignment um, you can edit all of it have a go at the activities and you can do this in the last week of term if you want and then hand it in to your teacher um, if you have any problems don't forget to ask us questions um, I'm going to make some more do try this at home YouTube videos um, over the weekend and for the rest of today. So make sure you have a go at those and watch and subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel, please. Um, so we can get a custom URL because that's what I really want at the moment. Thank you. Make sure you ask us if you need anything. Bye.